Hello everyone, Charles Watts here. It is Bank Holiday Monday. I hope you're all enjoying your day wherever you're watching this around the world. A bit later than usual today's show. Uh, out for a bit of a family meal this morning. Uh, family breakfast because my brother flew over from America for AW All In at Wembley last night, which was a very, very good night. I saw a few of you there. A few of you came up and said hello, so thank you for that. It's good to see so many Arsenal fans around the place. Uh, you all had a very good night indeed. If you did go, it was a really cracking show. I thought very, very good. Well done, AEW. Roll on next year for the next one. But you don't want to hear me talk about wrestling, do you? Or some of you might, but probably the majority of you don't. Um, so a fair bit to talk about today. Obviously, Kieran Tierney's headed off. We'll speak about him. Um, things beginning to move. Rob Holding being linked with Spanish clubs today. We'll look at what's going to happen in the next few days leading up to Friday's transfer deadline. Really busy week, really, at Arsenal uh, when you think about it. Although there's no game. They've got the League Cup draw on Wednesday. There's the Champions League draw on Thursday. We'll find out the sort of fixtures on Friday for who Arsenal will be playing and when in that after that draw takes place. You've got trans transfer deadline, of course. So... Um, plenty of stuff going on in terms of outgoings. Will there be a surprise kind of incoming right at the end of the window? We shall wait and see. Only a few day days left to find out. So we'll talk about all that sort of stuff. Of course, got some comments and questions from you guys as well at the end. Still quite a lot of fallout from that 2-2 draw against Fulham at the weekend. So let's get going and let's start with uh, Kieran Tierney, shall we? He has completed his loan move to Real Sociedad now and yeah, I really, really hope this works out really well for Kieran Tierney. I hope he goes over to Spain and has a really good season. I mean, obviously, that would be beneficial for Arsenal for uh, in the first place because that will protect his value, if it could even increase his value. And hopefully will mean there is a much bigger market for him come next summer. Sociedad, Sociedad do not have a um, clause within this deal to turn it permanent, should they so, sh so wish. I mean... If he plays well, then why wouldn't they want to turn it permanent? So just because there's no clause doesn't mean he won't necessarily become a permanent Real Sociedad player next season. We'll have to wait and see how he gets on. But um, I think, as I've spoke about this before in previous videos in the last few days, you know, obviously Arsenal would have preferred to sell Kieran Tierney. There wasn't really that big a market for him. I think they'll be, they would have been very surprised at the fact no Premier League clubs really came in for him and firmed up their interest. There was interest from Newcastle. There was interest from Aston Villa as well, but no one came in and actually put a bid. And that's why Arsenal basically turned to Sociedad at the end because they kind of looked at it, saw what options were available. And, you know, this was a good one for Tierney, no doubt about it. I think it's a fantastic move for him. Champions League football, really good club, great place to live. Um, and he looks happy. Certainly, if you're watching this on YouTube, he's smiling, uh, not surprising. There, he's probably arrived at San Sebastian and thought, wow, what a lovely place this is. Um, so it's a great move for him. And I really hope he does well um, because he deserves it. You know, I still think it's really unfortunate the way things have panned out for Tierney, really, at Arsenal. Could they have used him more? Probably. Um, but, you know, Mikel Arteta's got a strict way of playing, really, and way he sees things. And obviously, Kieran doesn't really fit into that. And so... Um, but he's too good to be sitting around not playing. That's why I'm really, I'm really happy that he's got this decent move. But fingers crossed it pans out well and Arsenal can benefit from it. From it in the in the long run, I think we're all going to be watching Spanish football um, more this season just to watch how Kieran gets on. You see the sort of reaction on social media to the move and you see just how many sort of well wishes there are for Tierney, how many people have sent him you know, messages saying good luck. You know, he's such a popular member of the squad. You know, the players like him, but the fans like him. You know, since coming down from Celtic, he really built up a rapport with the fans really, really quickly because of that type of player he is. I was speaking to a journalist um, over in Spain. They called me because they wanted to have a sort of discussion about Tierney and, you know, talking about his strengths, weaknesses and all that. A Spanish journalist, and he was asking about Tierney. He was like trying to, um, I was saying, you know, he's a real fighter. You're going to love him. And I think well, fans do love him because of the way he plays and the, that sort of spirit, that fighting spirit that he shows. And, um, you know, that really endeared himself to the Arsenal fan base. And I'm sure he'll endear himself to the Sociedad fan base as well. Just fingers crossed he can stay fit. Because if he stays fit, I don't see why he won't have a fantastic season and, uh, and do very well for them. So good luck, Kieran Tierney. Let me know what you guys are thinking about this move now that it has been confirmed. You're sorry to see Kieran go. Are you? Uh, do you understand the move? You know, how do you feel about the loan deal? Let me know. Anything you want to share, any comments, any questions, do let me know by leaving a comment below. Okay, Rob Holding continues to attract interest. So Fabrizio Romano today talking about Spanish clubs being interested in Rob Holding. We know Besiktas are interested. They have had one bid turned down for Holding. 
during the summer so far. That interest is believed to remain, but they haven't followed things up with another better improved offer yet. So we shall see what happens in the remaining few days of the window. Holding just one of several players, Arsenal are trying to move on or in the process of trying to move on uh, before Friday. Nicolas Pepe, of course, uh, one of them, Cedric Suarez, Nuno Tavares, Sammy Laconga. You know, there's lots of players who Arsenal are looking to sort deals out for. It's going to be a really busy few days leading up to Friday's deadline. Really important that Arsenal get some of these players out. Mikel Arteta has spoken about it in his last couple of press conferences. He is very aware of it. He knows how important it is. Club are working, but it's just been a little bit slow going once again from Arsenal on the selling front. You know, it's, it's easy to sit here and criticise them. I think we're all hoping Arsenal are going to do do a better job when it comes to selling this summer and get some really decent money in. But, you know, if, if clubs aren't coming in, I mean, Arsenal will be really... You know, I, don't, I don't really sit here and blame Arsenal for the fact that Kieran Tierney's had to go out on loan. I'm just really surprised other clubs haven't come in and, and actually put money on the table for Kieran Tierney. You know, Arsenal will be trying to facilitate a move. Everyone knows they've been trying to facilitate a move, but no one's come in with a, a proper offer for him. And, you know, it's hard to really criticise Arsenal for that because, you know, they've, they've been doing all they can to try and get a move done. But, no one's come in and put money on the table. And that's why he's ended up going out on loan. And um, we're at that stage of the window now where it, it does almost become more of a buyer's market because the selling, you know, everyone knows that Arsenal are desperate to offload these players and they've only got a few days left to do it. And when they're in that situation, selling, um, buying clubs can come in. They'll be like, well, you know, we'll take him, but we're not going to give you much money or any money. Um, and then it's up to Arsenal to decide what to do. So, the closer we get to Friday, the worse their bargaining position becomes. So it'll be interesting to see what sort of deals, if they get any for some of these players. You know, I look at holding. I don't see why they can't, you know, someone doesn't come in for a holding. I know he gets a lot of grief at Arsenal, but I think he is a good defender and he would he would be an asset to, you know, I'm not talking about the very top clubs, but I think he'd be an asset to good clubs. And the same, I think Nuno Tavares, although he clearly has faults, I think he has attributes that makes him a really potentially exciting player as well. And, um, you know, Arsenal disappointed that he couldn't agree a deal with Nottingham Forest. You know, Arsenal was certainly hoping that was going to happen. It didn't. He stayed. Um, he is looking at other things at the moment. But, you know, for Arsenal's point of view, I think they'd have been very happy had he decided to go to Forest when they came in for him. But we'll see what else happens and if anyone else comes up and puts some money in. Because I look at what, you know, Arsenal paid about seven, eight million for the Nuno Tavares. And I really think they should be turning a decent little profit on him because I think he's a fairly decent player still. And he's still very young. He's still got a decent chunk on his contract. He's not on massive money by any means. So, you know, he's not really going to be, you know, other clubs will be able to come on and take on those wages. So I think they should be looking to get some decent money for him. Lekong was slightly different, I think. I think that when you look at Lukonga, you think probably a loan is, is the more likely option at, the, at this stage now. But I think Tavares is a very sellable asset for Arsenal and I hope they can get something done. And I think for Rob Holden as well, he deserves to go. I think he, he needs to move on. He needs to get a, get a team where he's going to play. You know, he's done a really good role at Arsenal. That interview he did with Timsey, I spoke about on YouTube the other day and I dropped the link into the description of the box. If you If you haven't watched it yet, you should try and watch it. It's a really good interview and it sheds a real interesting light on Holden and his type of character and why he is so popular behind the scenes. Um, you know, and I think his departure will leave a big hole in the dressing room, but I think it's I think it's best for all parties now, isn't it? That he goes out and play Arsenal, potentially get a bit of money in for him. And that is very, very important because Arsenal need to bring money in. They've brought some money in this window. Obviously, we're waiting to see what happens with Foller and Balogun when that move gets confirmed to Monaco, which should be very, very soon now. Um, after the deal was sort of verbally agreed between the two clubs. We wait and see, um, you know, when this is going to get done. I expect it will be in the next couple of days, but I have to wait and see. But when that move goes through on top of the Jacka money, Matt Turner money as well, they've brought in a little bit um, from a sell-on clause for Mavropanos and um, Matteo Guendouzi as well is now closing in on the move to Lazio. Uh, I think all in, it's going to end up being about sort of 15 million euros, potentially rising to about 18 million euros. Now, Arsenal have a 15% sell-on clause on him, so they're going to get some money through the door for Guendouzi as well. Not massive amounts, but it all sort of goes into the pot, and that money is very, very important for Arsenal because they've spent so much recently. They need to bring some of that that money back in, and um, you know, this summer they're expecting to bring a fair amount of money in. They haven't managed to really do that yet. That you know, Balogun will balance the books quite well. It's pure profit in terms of accounting because he's a uh, academy player, so that will be beneficial. They've got the Xhaka money 
like I said, and little pieces, bits and pieces here and there. But I think it'd be handy if they could bring in a little bit extra for you, Rob Holding and your Nuno Tavares, those type of players. But let me know, as always, your thoughts on those situations and what Arsenal should be doing in the next few days of the window. Let me know in the comments below. OK, let's move on to some questions and some comments now. Like I said, the fallout is still ongoing, really, from the... Def from, I was going to say defeat. It feels like a defeat because of the reaction. I've been surprised at just how brutal the reaction to Saturday has been. Now, obviously, I know what it's like when you drop points. Um... In the Premier League, especially if you've got designs on pushing Manchester City all the way, you know, drop any drop points are costly, especially at home to a team like Fulham, especially when you've been in front as well, and then you throw it away. I can understand the reaction is not going to be great, but I've been surprised at just how brutal it has been, really. And um, yeah, I think we all need to have a little bit of a, take a little bit of a deep breath at times. I mean, Manchester City showed yesterday that it's not easy playing these type of teams. Obviously, they got themselves over the line just, and that's what they do, and that's what makes them so good. Even when they don't play well, they manage to get themselves off over the line with late winners. But you know, it's a difficult league, no matter who you're playing. Uh, Lewis here says, I was pretty unhappy after the game, but we all need to take a deep breath and realise last season, a lot of big factors of our success was how behind the team that we were as a fan base. We undoubtedly helped the team around some questionable score lines last season. If we get on their backs early this season, it could spell trouble. Now, that doesn't mean the tactics were correct or the lineup, but at the end of the day, all we can do as fans is get behind the team and the manager and let the rest play out. Good comment, I think. Um, and yeah, I mean, the atmosphere was so, so important last season. We all know that. Everyone's spoken about it. Um, the mood around the Emirates, how that dragged the team up on occasions in some of these games, that, like you talk about there, you think back to Bournemouth and those sort of matches, the really tight ones, Man United, Liverpool, you know, when those games were really, really tight and the fans made such a big impact and they drove the players on and they, all the players used to speak about it after the games. They used to sit there in the mix, stand there in the mix zones, talking to us afterwards and tell us how every week they'd tell us about how important fans were. And um, you want that to continue this season, certainly. Uh, Vet Pyra says, Hi, Charles, with respect with Havertz, I think both Sinchenko and Gabriel being taken out of the side really disrupts our fluidity and balance on the left. It took Jack a really long to settle in that position. And given how good he was last year, it was always going to show when he left. Taking out Gabriel also is a bridge too far for me. I agree. Look, I've said it plenty of times. I don't get the whole thing with Gabriel. I'm, I, I honestly feel like there's something more to it. I don't, I know Mikel keeps saying it's tactical, but I don't know. And it, like, that's no information that I've received on it, but I just, it just surprises me that if it's tactical, I just, I just don't really buy it. I don't, I just feel like it's more to it than that. It'll be really interesting to see what happens this weekend if Sinchenko does cut back into the team as expected against Man United. What happens with Gabriel? I've predicted every single week since the first game of the season that Gabriel's going to come back into the team and he hasn't. So I'm not going to predict it this time. <laughs> I'm just going to wait and see what happens. Personally, I very much hope he does come back into the team. I think that is really, really important. Um, uh, Viru Pakshwala says Vieira was good and did what he looked uh, and did what he looked what he was meant to do, be an assist machine. But we nearly conceded with him falling on his face and not getting a foul. You still can't start Vieira in a real contest. Few good balls don't mean he is ready for the PL. This is in response to me saying that he needs to be rewarded for that cameo with a start against Manchester. I, I can see what you mean. Obviously, we know Vieira is, is a very slight frame and he can be pushed off the ball. And against Manchester United, you expect that's going to be a really fierce physical game at the weekend. But, you know, if you can't play him in these games because it's physical, then you're never going to play him. He's playing in the Premier League every week's physical. It doesn't matter who you're playing against, be it against Man United or be against Sheffield United. It's always going to be a physical encounter. So, you know, Vieira, if he's going to succeed in this league, if he's become going to produce the type of performances that he did against Fulham week in, week out, then he's going to need to cope with that. And so, you know, I still think he should start at the weekend. I think it would send out a good message to the squad that you get rewarded for really excellent performances. And uh, so I'd be starting him ahead of Kai Havertz for me, despite the sort of worries about how physically well he can cope with those sorts of games. I look at United's matches this season as well and how just open they've been basically in midfield and how teams have really got at them by getting on the ball and running with it and doing something clever in that central area. And I think that Vieira, if he can play the way he did against Fulham with that kind of urgency and with that real sort of hunger just to get the ball forward, I think he could have some real success against this way this Manchester United team seems to be setting up this season. So, uh, yeah, for me, he he's one of my starters, I have to say, at the weekend. But if you agree with me or disagree with me, do let me know in the comment below. Uh, one from Van Persie here. 
Uh, don't like that tagline. I think you should change that, Van Persie. <laughs> Just a personal opinion. Uh, apparently, everybody in their name is now an expert on inverting fullbacks. The knee-jerk reaction to a draw this early in the season is insane. Havertz being scapegoated for nothing when each game I see Martinelli making wrong decisions in the final third, costing us goals. Havertz is open in the box, but Martinelli refuses pass to him in the early minutes. Nobody talks about that. Everything wrong is purely, but it's probably Havertz's fault. Yeah, I agree. I think the criticism of Havertz has been really unjust and unfair in a way, in terms of how how deep it has been. You know, I think you know, he's a footballer. He's going to get criticised. That comes with his territory. So I'm not saying that's unfair, but just how harsh it's been and how brutal it's been and how he seems to be singled out for everything. You know, Arsenal didn't lose or didn't draw that game at the weekend because I kind of have it. They drew that game because they missed some really big chances and because they were stupid in defence twice. Um, you know, you defend properly in that game against Fulham. You win it absolutely comfortably. But it doesn't matter, you know, if Havertz plays like he did or not, you win that game absolutely comfortably. It's not his fault that Arsenal lost the game. But that he didn't perform well, I think that's clearly very obvious. And um, Arsenal looked a better team when Mikel made those changes and took him off in the second half and kind of reverted back a little bit to what we know from Arsenal. And Arsenal did look better. But again, I don't see that purely as Havertz's fault. I look at it more as the fact that what Mikel's doing with the defence, I just think it's disrupting things so much. And as I said yesterday, I don't think everyone seems to be saying that the changes he's made at the back is to try and accommodate Havertz, but I just don't buy that. I think the changes he's made at the back is just because of this new experiment, if you want to call it, whatever it is. Um, is and I don't think it's down to Havertz. I think if Vieira had started against Fulham, I still think Mikel plays the same back four um, that he did. I don't think it's because of Havertz. If anything, the, he's kind of accommodating Rice almost more by playing party at right back. So you can get both of those two in the team. I don't really see that it's it's down to Kai Havertz personally, but, you know, I'm sure plenty of you disagree. Well, I know pl plenty of you disagree because I've seen the comments you've been leaving uh, uh, in the videos and on my social media that many of you do disagree. But I just think it is a little bit harsh. And as Dan Percy says here, I think it's all a little bit... Pretty mad this early in the season. Some of the criticism coming Arsenal and, and Kai Havertz and the players' way after, you know, one draw it wasn't even the defeat it was a draw um and as man as i said man city yesterday showed just how difficult it is in this league every single game you've got to be on it unfortunately city once again managed to get themselves over the line and potentially that is the difference between manchester city arsenal and the rest is just that man city even when they don't play well they can get themselves over the line and they know how to do that uh, other teams at the moment don't quite have that quality all right, that's it from me, everyone. Please do have a fantastic end to your bank holiday weekend, wherever you're watching this around the world. I'll be back tomorrow once again to talk all things Arsenal as we continue to gear up towards Manchester United on the Sunday and events like the Champions League draw on the Thursday. Exciting week coming up in North London. Have a great day, everyone. I'll speak to you soon.